I have black lines on my analog video and the OSD disappears when I throttle up. How do I fix this? I have a capacitor and I'm powering the camera from the Yashin VTX. So you're, you're on the right track. Those black lines are absolutely because you are getting noise from the motors or the ESCs or both. Um, and having a capacitor is absolutely the right way to try to tr solve that. Moving the camera to a different 5 volt regulator, absolutely a good way to solve that. You're doing the right step. Um, OSD disappearing. OSD is disappearing because the sync pulse, which we were just talking about, the OSD needs the sync pulse to draw the OSD. And when the sync pulse gets lost, the, um, the flight controller can't draw the OSD. And so oh, you're, you, this is all right uh, up the right alley, right? Um, but I would wonder why it's so bad in the first place. It's like saying every time I put my weight on this foot, I have a screaming pain in my ankle and I've tried everything. I have a splint on my ankle. I have a bandage on my ankle. I took some ibuprofen and, and it's like, okay, that's cool, but why do you have a screaming pain in your ankle every time you put weight on it? Oh, there's a bone sticking out. Okay, well, we need to fix that problem. So that's the situation you're in right now. You're kind of putting Band-Aids on top of a problem and I want to find out why the problem's happening in the first place. It shouldn't be that bad. And if it is that bad and you could fix it with Band-Aids, great, because you can at least get in the air, but we should try and solve the problem. Number one thing I would look for is, are your motor screws too long? When your motor screws are too long and they stick up above the motor base, then they can touch the motor windings or the motor wires. And a lot of times it'll just make you fry a motor, but sometimes if there's just very light contact, it doesn't make you fry the motor, but it does make horrible, horrible video noise. So that's the first thing I would look for. Is there some way that the output of the ESC is getting grounded out and it's, it's making a lot of noise on the ground plane? Um, that's the first thing I would check. Uh, there are other things it could be. You could have some maybe contact between the ESC and the bottom plate, but that's the kind of direction I would look for, okay? Uh, a lot of times when you have horrible, horrible noise, that it, it comes back to some kind of issue like that. So Chad, is, and, uh, a couple yeah. of different people mentioned different things. Uh, like this wouldn't be an antenna issue, right? You wouldn't expect black lines no. from an antenna 1, issue. No, 1,000% no. Fuzz, you would expect like fuzz because right. the black is in the signal that's there. Fuzz is you seeing it or not from the signal at the distance. Correct, correct. This is being injected into the video system before it gets to the video transmitter. Um, and the other thing that's key is it starts when you arm the quad and it is independent of distance. So if it was an antenna issue, you're right, Blunty, you would see fuzz or snow and then it would get worse as you get further away. And also the antenna issue would not really be related to whether you were or weren't running the motors. Um, how do you know if a capacitor is bad? Is there a chance that the cap just, like, there's a bad yes. cap? I, I, hear this, I hear people ask this all the time, like, do you think it's worth just swapping caps in a case like this? Sure. Um, how do you know if the cap is bad? The first thing I would do is I would do a physical inspection. It is semi-common for one of the capacitor legs to break off. Just because you solder the capacitor on, it's kind of hanging off there, and then it's kind of flapping around as you fly and crash and vibrate, and eventually one leg pops off, and you don't know, and now your capacitor isn't working at all. Um, I don't think capacitors usually like wear out. I mean, they do eventually, but not in the typical lifespan of a quadcopter. Um, it, it certainly would be worth just replacing the capacitor. Although, if it's this bad, I would think that even without the capacitor, like it shouldn't be like this bad, right? So I'm not sure about that, but it's worth it. How would you know if the capacitor was bad? You can test the capacitor if you have a multimeter that has a capacitance function. Multimeters can measure capacitance and you would measure the capacitance. There are other ways that a capacitor could fail that wouldn't be detected by that. But if you measure the capacitance and the capacitance is not fairly close to the nominal value, then that would be bad. It's, it's probably simpler to just go ahead and replace the capacitor though. Yeah, Other anything else? Uh, do you need to unsolder the capacitor to test it? Yes, you, you do 100%. You, you can't test it, well, I never say can't, like someone out there who's smarter than me about electronics will chime in and say, yes, you can. You, but in general, you can't test a capacitor in circuit because the capacitor is in parallel with other stuff, including other capacitors. A lot of times, capacitors will be in a bank and there will be a, like 10 capacitors in parallel and their capacitance adds up and they act basically like one big capacitor that's 10 times as big. 
And so if you wanted to measure the capacitance of one of those capacitors, you would need to remove it from the board to separate it from the others because you would be measuring the capacitance of the entire bank. Um, that's true also for your electrolytic capacitor that you've soldered to your ESC. There are lots of other capacitors on that ESC, and so you wouldn't be able to test that capacitor just by itself.